All right, so here we go. This is Road to the Pros. This is Road to the Pros. It's a documentary made by the University of Alabama about Henry Toa Toa and his Road to the Pros. I did a reaction to episode one the other day. I was very pleased with Henry Toa Toa, but uh, I am a little bit nervous because I've, I've been painting kind of a narrative about this Texans uh, offseason and really the past couple of years where, man, they really seem to be going for guys that have this commitment gene. Jalen Petrie could have bailed out of his commitment to Baylor after the Art Brile scandal, but he decided to stay when everybody else bailed and he stayed through a coaching change. And in the end, he's a guy that he's glad that he stuck it out. D'Amico Ryans wants to come back home and all these guys that have this commitment gene. And I watched the first episode of this show and I thought it was awesome with, uh, with Henry Toa Toa. But then at the very end, you find out, okay, I thought he was going to go to Alabama, but he went to Tennessee right out of high school. Well, what happened? Because I never got drafted out of Alabama. Well, this is what happened. Athletic Director Fulmer and I agree that we have no choice but to move forward with terminating Coach Pruitt. When I do my interviews with these coaches, they'll be like, hey, man, what's like the hardest thing you've been through in life as a, as a, like, as a grown adult? And I tell them, like, leaving Tennessee was like definitely the hardest part. My phone was just blowing up so much. Like, we knew you were a traitor. Like, all the long, like... We knew who you are. You don't belong here. You don't belong to where orange. Yeah. Traitor. (laughs) Treacherous. Just, just up and left. I can tell you from experience. I thought about transferring my sophomore year after my sophomore year, spring uh, after my sophomore season, spring of my sophomore year. And, uh, I actually went and asked the coach to give me, um, I can't remember what a release to go seek a potential transfer. And, and he shamed me. He guilted me into staying and made me feel awful about myself. Like had me almost broken down in tears and, uh, which I don't think is actually ethical or legal, but, uh, but I had already, I had gone and I'd spoken to a coach at a, a division one school before I had asked for the release. And somehow my, my coach found out about it because I was too dumb to realize that the, the head coach of that team was like a lifelong friend with my head coach. So I'd gone and talked to this division one school's defensive line coach. The defensive line coach was like, hell yeah, we'll take you go get your release. And then he went and talked to his head coach and that head coach told my head coach. And then he just, he kind of, he kind of, he kind of forced me back into it. It's hard, man. It's hard transferring. And I didn't have, I wouldn't have had throng. I didn't even, I didn't have a cell phone. I wouldn't have had throngs of people on my smartphone coming after me. But uh, so he uh, he decides to he decides to transfer because Pruitt got fired. He wasn't happy with all of the stuff that was going on. And um, and then this is when this University of Alabama produced documentary starts to feel like a really, really nice advertisement for anybody who might be considering transferring to the University of Alabama his understanding of concepts and being able to oh wait but first but first uh this is one of his to, to, to set the scene he had spent two years starting at tennessee started a bunch of games his freshman year really came into his own as his uh as a sophomore and then his as one of his assistant coaches who was with him at tennessee uh explains just why he's as good as he was manipulate the defense through audibles and checks is really what sets him apart yeah, so really bright kid, and that's uh, what all the scouting reports say, and people gush over him. This is when the advertisement for the transfer portal really gets hot and heavy. There were so many talks of movement happening um, with coaching staff and his staff, and I just felt that it was, at that time, was it was unstable. You're only 17, 18 years old. When you- oh, wait. Woman arrested, charged in fire near Texas AG's office. Paxton says, I was recording this on my phone earlier. I didn't realize there was an alert. See, I missed the, I missed the alert. I missed the news. I could have helped. And come out of college, I mean, out of high school. So you, sometimes you make mistakes, sometimes you mess up. It gives them a different opportunity to be able to explore like different avenues. And that's what it gave me. Like it gave me a chance to be able to jump back on my two feet and right my wrongs. Being able to go back out again and like, okay, let's see what else can I can do. Like, I did this here, let me see what else I can do. Like, sometimes things don't work for you, like, and it doesn't work out how you planned it. So, 
Um, I think it gives kids that opportunity to be able to find that planet they were looking for. It's a, <laughs> it fades to black there. That's like a, it either, it felt like either maybe like a youth ministry, a church, or, uh, or maybe a trade school or someplace you can go like a home for wayward children after he like, and that was actually like a, several minutes of that. I started looking up, I Googled like Henry Tua Oa, Toa, 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 trouble with the law or anything like that. Cause he talked about getting in trouble. And the only thing that came up was Henry Toa, Toa trouble for the offense. Yeah. He spells trouble. He's never been in trouble. He's talking there. He was talking about deciding to go to Tennessee. Like he had uh, like gotten somebody pregnant uh, as a teenager or something, or that he had uh, tried hardcore drugs or something. I think he was just talking about choosing to go to the university of Tennessee. But he he figured out ways to right his wrongs, and he found the Church of Alabama. Once I like once he oh oh and then uh, but Christian Harris, some of you know this, and he talked about this after he was drafted. But Christian Harris, who he knew his senior year in high school, is like his best bud in the world. So Christian Harris, who we were just talking about, uh, will be his fellow linebacker here in Houston. But I got excited just about uh, I I didn't know quite how close they were as friends. He said and made a decision like after all of that, that it's like, okay, I'm gonna just go to Bama. Like, I mean, I, that's that's what you need to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, that ain't a bad choice. Like, you can't go wrong with that. So, he was able to start like pretty fast. Like he got a hang of it real quick. Like and we play similar. <laughs> like imagine you're a kid thinking about transferring and you watch this video and you're like, oh, that's that's what I need to do. And I can right the wrongs of my past and I'm going to start pretty soon. Like with our play styles, like we even talk about it. We'll have the exact, like we'll be side by side. Like Mike and Will, exact same steps. And it, we don't know how it's happening, but like we're thinking the same, we react the same. So and that shit was cake. It was easy for him. <laughs> Alabama's like, like De La Salle. Uh, De La Salle is his high school. And before he gets to that part, because that's really the, that's the, the cherry on top of this advertisement for how awesome it is to transfer to Alabama. Um, but like, yeah, watch this footwork from these guys. So, and that shit was cake. It was easy for him. Alabama's like. Oh, it didn't go all the way back. Sorry, guys. I, I really want to watch this footwork again. I get excited about it. So these two guys playing next to each other in lockstep. Need to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, that ain't a bad choice. Like, you can't go wrong with that. He was able to start, like, pretty fast. Like, he got a hang of it real quick. Like, and we play similar, like, with our play styles. Like, we even talk about it. We'll have the exact, like, we'll be side by side. Like Mike and Will, exact same steps. And it, we don't know how it's happening, but like we're thinking the same, we react the same. So and that shit was cake. It was easy for him. Alabama's like, like De La Salle. Like, we're like this. Like, we're like brothers. Like, they brothers. <laughs> I really, I want to transfer to Alabama now. I just, I want to go get yelled at by Saban. They said that his, they said, uh, like, I know every generation says this, but they, even the younger guys at Alabama will say, yeah, we know it's not as bad as it used to be. That fourth quarter workout that they do in the spring and everything. It's, uh, it's not, not as bad as it used to be, which reminds me, let me tell you a quick story. Um, this is a Tom Coughlin college story. Don't worry. I'm not telling any non Texans NFL stories anymore, but, um, the Tom Coughlin, I remember the, this, this guy, I know Tom McManus was at Boston college when Coughlin showed up and Coughlin, like Coughlin walked in and man, I don't want to get the story wrong, but basically walked in after he had just been hired and they were all in the middle of uh, a workout, an off-season workout at Boston College and walked in and without even saying hello to anybody or anything, just started screaming and yelling at everybody, yelling at some, some guy was puking in a barrel and coughing was telling him he was soft, like hardcore stuff. And those are the kinds of stories you would hear about Saban too. And that just, um, that does not fly anymore. And <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't happen. Uh, so uh, Alabama, like this, where I did get genuinely excited is I think that like these guys, both are guys who respond to that. I do like uh, when you sometimes guys in college, guys in the NFL that came from programs where they actually had that really tight knit feel to it. 
Um, you know, I, I don't know if a lot of you guys might you'll remember Jay Foreman, the linebacker um, from the first couple of years here. He was a Nebraska linebacker. And, you know, from back when like Nebraska had badass defenses and the stories he would tell about college and just how psychotic those guys were on defense there. It just, it creates a different type of guy as like a special type of guy. So, and Foreman was a guy that played way above his, you know, combine numbers and, and all of that. So Christian Harris, awesome friend, um, University of Alabama, you can right all your wrongs. You can undo the past. You can um, finally make your parents proud if you just enter the transfer portal and go to Alabama. But uh, these guys are like, I, I can't em not emphasize to you enough how tight these guys are. Everywhere Christian went, I went. Everywhere I went, Christian went. But like, we were together everywhere we went. We rode together to class. Like, he was a guy that, that like, when I get married, like, He's going to be in my line. And, like, and I know if he gets married, like, I'm going to be in his line. So there's the commitment I was looking for. Remember, I, remember I was nervous. Oh, by the way, it's not a, I'm not a beer snob. I saw somebody say that. It's, uh, I'm trying out this. My wife got this for me at, like, some grocery store near her parents' house, which is, it's gluten-free beer. It's not bad. It's called Glutenberg, <laughs> which I don't know. It's stupid. So I thought they make it look like a like a a German beer. I've been uh, I do better uh, without the gluten. I'm not ashamed. I don't go, I don't avoid it completely, but I do better without the gluten. So what were we talking about with these guys? I got I got uh, crushed on the uh, I got stuck on the gluten. Let me let me rewind this. Like. And I know oh. if he gets married, like, I'm going to be in his line. So, Okay. At no point when I was a senior in college did I ever think, man, this guy is a really good friend of mine. Uh, someday when I get married, he's going to stand in my line. Like, it was, it was like, nowhere close to it. So, uh, as, you know, and as, uh, as Henry's father talked about in episode one, and I just, I, as I know from various uh, Polynesian guys that I know, man, family is very, very important. And, um, it is not taken lightly, which I know sounds like a basic thing, but whatever. Um, and, uh, I think like that, yeah, I think my senior year in college, it was more of like, you know, bros before hoes and, uh, we're never getting married. We're going to be like whoever George Clooney was at the time. We didn't really know George Clooney was going to turn into this legendary bachelor who one day forsook his friends except for the ones that could help him with his tequila company. So they're very, very tight. They're buds. He's got the commitment gene. And this is the thing that, that really sealed it was they don't win the national championship a couple years ago. Uh, you guys know that it was very devastating. Oh, oh and then they, oh, and then they lose to Georgia. Um, 33 to 18. My God, do you even quarterback 18 points? Either you're a winner or you're a loser. Jeez. Like, that's the two options you have. Like, that's how I always look at things. You either win or you lose. So, like, I'm not saying that season was a fail, but like, that season was was not what what I wanted, what we wanted. Like, that was not it. Yeah. So uh, they lost that. Christian Harris talked about that for a while. Uh, it's very good. Also, there is a part in here where, uh, and I don't mean to. It, it just wasn't all that related to the football side of things. But there is a part in here where his father basically uh, does a. D uh, holy oil treatment on him to help uh, remedy some ailment that he has um, when they talk about his faith a little bit. I didn't want to be able to think I was like just trying to wash over the whole faith side of it. The faith, faith is very important to him and, uh, and his, and his family. Uh, so if you're, if that intrigues you, go click on the link and go watch. Like, of course, you know, the fans expect you to win. Like okay. So they lose that. They, they lose, uh, they don't win the national championship. The, the fans have high expectations and, uh, obviously there's always that pressure there. So I, I felt like this was interesting just from a uh, NFL player's perspective. And it relates to CJ Stroud a little bit too. Not it. Like, of course, you know, the fans expect you to win. Like they expect you to win. Like, you play for Alabama, you're supposed to win. Like, but it doesn't come easy like that. Our coaching staff does a great job of like making sure like you're not paying attention to that. You just try to work your tail off every single day. So like all that, and that's something that Saban talks about a lot is the process, the process, you know, you've got your ultimate goals, but I, but 
you're working on that day. What's the goal right in front of you? All that stuff. I mean, these guys, uh, it, I'm joking about Alabama being a cult and everything, but the guys that come out of Alabama and I, you know, going back to Kareem Jackson and uh, they just, the, you don't have to worry about them as much on average as you got to worry about other guys. They just, they've been through that process. And I think now, especially the guys that stick it out at, at Alabama and could transfer if they wanted to, or if they're not starting or what have you, um, there's, they're kind of, they've passed a screening test that not necessarily everybody else has. That, does, that doesn't mean that they're awesome automatically or anything. It's just, uh, it's a cool little screening for them. Now, the other part when it comes to the commitment part was this year when Alabama was out of the playoffs, how would guys like Henry Toa Toa uh, react and respond to playing in a meaningless, a quote unquote meaningless bowl game? At this time, we there, there was people talking to us and giving us advice like Henry shouldn't play but then I totally went against the character who Henry is. Man, you come to Alabama like, like you'll be wrong to not play in any game that's presented in front of you. Yeah, like it, it would be wrong to not play in any game that's presented in front of you. Because we were hot. We were pissed that we weren't in the, the playoffs. Pissed. You know, that last game, like, oh, I ain't never going to miss a game. Like, you put a game on the schedule, like, I'm going to be there. So uh, I, I feel he has, a, he has a, enough of the commitment gene. I'm okay with him transferring away from Tennessee. I, I feel like it was, they were up to no good there at Tennessee, obviously. Horrible, horrible decision to ever change anything there. It wasn't going to work out for him. Um, but uh, it, and, uh, this is the very last part. I, one thing I'm really starting to appreciate in these documentaries, in these episodes, is that Toa Toa's dad, Mr. Toa Toa, is, uh, he's very eloquent. He's uh, poetic almost. What type of person are you? Can you handle it? Can you fight to it? Can you get back up when you fall down kind of thing? And that was what Alabama was able to re reinstill into my son that he might have forgot. Look at that. I would think since slow it came from. Not, not you, Greg. You're a poet in your own right. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but that was beautiful. And uh, But again, like he's, what, what was he atoning for? Was it just, was it not committing to Alabama in the first place? Like to like to reinstill. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out here too was, man, look at that nil money. Those are those Apple AirPod Maxes, aren't they? I do not like the looks of those things, but I know they're badass, and I know they cost like six hundred dollars. That's not uh, that's not what the kids in the pre nil days, at least not kids who came from families with eight siblings uh, who kind of grew up, you know, of very modest means. They weren't rocking those things back before the NIL days, unless they're either a running back, a quarterback, or a wide receiver, uh, or at least, or uh, like a like a genuine stud uh, defensive player of the year type, where the alumni were handing him out like candy. What are you? Can you handle it? Can you fight to it? Can you get back up when you fall down kind of thing? And that was what Alabama was able to re reinstill into my son that he- To reinstill into my son. He might have forgot. He might have forgotten it. Did I miss something? I didn't. Maybe I didn't do as exhaustive a search as I needed to on uh, any potential issues or anything that Toa Toa had. But it sounded like he was awesome at Tennessee. And then they had a coaching change and he transferred to Alabama and he was awesome there. So.